I'm reporting this because no other television news channel will. Be warned, the following information is distressing. A grooming gang of refugees from Syria and Kuwait raped and abused a child in Newcastle, passing her around like a toy. Hazefa al Aboud and Omar and Mohammed Badreddin subjected a 13-year-old girl to repeated rapes, taking it in turns, leaving her physically and emotionally scarred for life. They groomed the young girl, plied her with alcohol and took turns raping her, while another individual, Kuwait national al Saumi, pictured third from the left, laughed at her. They threatened to kill her or take her out of the country if she spoke out about it. They tried to convert her to Islam. She started reading the Quran and the court heard that in return they repeatedly raped, assaulted and abused her. The Bedreddin brothers also pleaded guilty to violent disorder in relation to a BLM march in 2020 while they were on bail for the sex offences. But this story somehow gets even more shocking. Omar Bedreddin was previously acquitted of a different sexual assault charge in 2016. And BBC Newsnight, who claim they've been following the story of the Badreddin since they arrived in the UK, decided to do a full feature on them. It was released the day Omar Badreddin was cleared of that previous unrelated sex charge eight years ago. That feature is still available on YouTube and it is called, unbelievably, To Hell and Back. The story of one Syrian family given refuge in the UK. The idea that Omar Badreddin had been through hell in Britain was repeated in tweets promoting the feature. It follows their journey of being accused of sexual assault. In the piece, the BBC claims the refugee family, quote, quickly found that in taking up the offer of sanctuary, they had replaced a war zone with a different kind of hell. Omar then claims that he thinks the girl made up all the allegations against him because she didn't like foreigners. He said, I felt she didn't want any foreigners in this country, and that is why she made up the whole story. Omar raped a girl on numerous occasions. When she was so drunk, she was vomiting and unable to stand up. And even after, she told him that she was self-harming. The BBC Newsnight piece also makes the claim that Syrian men in many ways were less sexually experienced than the girls they were supposed to have attacked. The BBC journalist said Omar told her he never even had a sexual relationship of any kind. Now, the BBC Newsnight reporter Katie Razzle wrote after they were initially found not guilty of sexual assault in 2016, Omar Badreddin's father, Marwan, in the public gallery began to cry when he heard the verdict. But when I walked into the Badreddin's home this afternoon, there was little celebration and the tears shed were not of joy. The family told me ever since their son's arrest that they'd felt humiliated and dishonored. In Syrian culture, this type of accusation is so damaging to their reputation. Omar is now serving 18 years for multiple counts of child rape. His brother Mohammed is serving 13 years. Of course, the BBC were unaware of the awful crimes that he would go on to commit. But it doesn't end here. Alaboud, who was convicted of two counts of rape, assault by penetration and assault occasioning actual bodily harm, was sentenced to just five and a half years. Al Salmi, guilty of three counts of sexual assault and assault by penetration, got a suspended sentence. There is no talk of even trying to deport these monsters. In fact, we asked the Home Office if they were considering it. They told us it wasn't really their responsibility before the Ministry of Justice referred us back to the Home Office, who then eventually said that those eligible will be deported at the earliest opportunity. It's a circus, isn't it? The BBC's documentary on a member of this vile refugee rape gang is still online. This grotesque case highlights several things. We are giving refuge to some people who rape and abuse children. Our state broadcaster stands accused by some people online of doing a PR job for these people. The BBC denies this, of course. But where is the BBC Newsnight follow-up on this story? The other things it shows is if people come here and rape kids, we still don't deport them. Sickening. The BBC has said in 2015 and 2016, Newsnight followed the story of the Bedreddin family, who were Syrian refugees who were settling in the UK. 
During 2016, their son Omar was tried for sexual assault and he was found not guilty. Two years afterwards, in 2018 and 2019, Omar Badreddin and his brother Mohammed committed multiple counts of rape. They were found guilty and were jailed last week. The BBC reported this. In any situation, the BBC can only report on the facts as they stand at the time, which is what we did in 2016. The Bedredian subsequent crimes are appalling, and we express our sincere sympathies to the victim. Let's get the thoughts now of my panel. I'm joined by GB News presenter Nana Aquir. I've got Conservative Stoke on Trent North MP Jonathan Gullis, and I've got author and broadcaster Amy Nicole Turner. Jonathan, I'll start with you. I mean, we are clearly importing some people and giving them refuge who then go on to commit crimes like this. And it appears that the BBC tripping over themselves to try to, at the earliest possible opportunity, do a nice bit of PR. So, first of all, I reiterate the point I made earlier, Patrick, which is we have particularly young single males who are undocumented, over 75% are coming illegally via small boats. We have no idea who they are. We have no idea if they've committed any crimes in their uh, country of origin. We have no idea what their intentions are. Therefore, they are posing a danger and a risk to the residents of our great nation. And they should be automatically detained, not kept in the hotel where they're allowed to wander off and disappear into the night that's happening far too regularly, which is why we must build our detention capacity and then make sure that schemes like Rwanda are getting off the ground as soon as possible. Now, with regards to this particular case... If we have to do some deals with countries like Syria in order to immediately return these people, then we should be willing to do those deals. In the end of the day, Syria is holding, I think, 25,000 foreign national defenders who went to fight on behalf of with ISIS, mm. uh, and you know some of those will be British. I, I, and whilst I don't want those people to return, if there's a deal to be done that we bring the British people mm. back here mm -hmm. and they serve life in prison in exchange for us being able to deport people who have come over here and have obviously literally, as we've seen, heard, raped a 13-year-old girl, mm. then ultimately that's the type of deal that I think we have to have that honest and frank conversation about. Does BBC Newsnight now have to do, uh, you know, with due prominence now mm. that this has happened? Do you think they should be going and doing something like this and reporting this? They put a story on their website, from what I could see. Well, I, I think they should really... I think they should put a bit more detail in, because, first of all, the fact that they were following this, this family and then this kind of happened around about the time they were following them, so this whole... The, the initial uh, court proceedings must mm. have been happening when they were filming. Uh, but there were many, many clues. As I listened to that... There was a bit where he said that he'd never had a sexual relationship, this is an 18-year-old, and that he's never even seen two people kissing. And then there was another bit where um, it turns out that the son that they'd left behind, the family had left one of the sons behind, and this son had now been killed, which was very sad, but apparently it was because he was an Islamic fundamentalist. Mm. And they couldn't wait to keep telling us about the far right. And mm. there were other elements of this as well. And I, I, I actually was quite incensed with the way they kind of... Newcastle came off, because I was born in Newcastle in 1971, and I was... I, we, we were literally the only black family there. And we, uh, we loved it, I loved it. It. But we were the only black family there, as far as I could see, and we were treated incredibly well. So I just find the whole thing was a real, real insult to the people of Newcastle as well. Yeah, the way they kept cutting yeah. to images yeah. of the EDL marches and stuff like that, it's rather than actually on. understanding the outrage. Yeah, the I just find family. it absolutely yeah. remarkable uh, that, that, you know, the, the, of all of the things that would have been going on in 2016 at that particular time yeah. when that BBC Newsnight episode addressed, it's like they couldn't wait to get this out there. I find that astonishing, and now it's massively backfired. Amy, should the BBC apologise? Should these people be deported? Um, I honestly, I just want to make, I want to make a couple of points. So mm. there, there is a problem at the moment with um, false rape accusations being levelled at asylum seekers. There's problems in Ireland, there's problems in Cornwall. So I can see why there would be interest in a story about asylum seekers being accused of rape. However, they did unfortunately get it wrong. But like they said, they can only deal with the facts at the time and they, they did say that they updated the news. So I don't really think they apologise. Moving on to should they be deported. So one in four women um, are raped in their lives, one in six children suffer sexual abuse. So I think that shows that violence against women doesn't have a nationality. So we just need to make it clear before we put out, like, a, I fear, saying that. I fear saying this that. story is a no. little bit of a dog whistle about no. the threat from asylum the, the, the seekers. The when a actually, dog I thought the program was When actually the reality is, you know, women are at risk the re the of, of sexual is, assault. The, re the reality is, Amy, that this is a refugee rape gang. 
It is, but there's just as much likelihood that it could have been a white gang from yeah, Glasgow as, as, as we saw in November. But we are focusing in on a, a case with, with, uh, with asylum seekers. That's, that's what the, the story, that's the no, story the we are discussing. The, BBC the story we're discussing story tonight. And, and it is that true it that in, in that society at the moment, in, in society at the moment, we do have a problem with the, there's a fear that asylum seekers create more crime, which is just statistically untrue. The, the, well, no, the, the, I think the fear is that you're letting people in who you don't know their background. That's the problem. Them. So the ones that are going to come here illegally, which they have done, they are already breaking the law. So they, a, a lot of them may well be but more I, breaking. But I it think we, to need, to, we need to focus on the good of that, that Syrian resettlement scheme that resettled, what, 20,000 people and was fantastic and had real right. success. And the majority... Well, they should have the done a programme on that then, shouldn't they? Oh, John, let's John, do a programme on that. They should have done should, that should, 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 you know, the government... I think it was under David Cameron when this lot came in. Should, they, should the government apologise to the family and, indeed, this third... Well, she's not 13 anymore, but the girl who had to suffer at the hands of these people that we mm. threw our arms around. I think, first of all, the government should absolutely look into the particular case of this family. I can't remember about the older brother who was left behind. That was so, in the... But yeah. I'm not disbelieving you no, now. No, I just no, can't, no, say, I can't yeah. recall it, but... Ultimately, we should be able to look into that and give answers about mm. why this particular family was granted out of all mm. the Syrians right. that were seeking to But it's not the BBC, is it? Is, is, with is, the, well, with is the it BBC, not more about... Finished, I want to hear what with the, but with the BBC, because I think, look, the, at the end of the day, the BBC does jump quickly on the bandwagon to kind of push this progressive But he'd agenda. been cleared. And actually, what they don't do is actually think about the story itself, about the fact that grooming gangs, which mm. they didn't really report in no. proper numbers are predominantly, in the words of Sajid Javid, when he was Home Secretary, in his case, uh, it's far too many Pakistani grooming gangs are leading the way, and there was far too much woke PC policing. Mm. They didn't want to call it out for what it was. Right. So Contrent has sadly had its own case, where one of my own constituents has sadly lost her life to alcoholism, having been the victim of a grooming gang. Yeah. The individual is walking See, free on the streets of Stoke-on-Trent, yeah. unable to actually get justice for the family that was the victim yeah. in this because you've kind the, of, the accuser... you kind of summed up my well, point there, because well, you've linked Pakistani grooming gangs to some Syrian... Some, to, some Syrian have, men who are basically saying no, foreigners just, just saying, are no, grooming gangs. Okay. Grooming. And that's all what right, I'm hearing. Right. Lots of grooming gangs are all, of all races. OK, all right. Now, in a statement given to us just before we went on air tonight, the Home Office said foreign nationals who commit crimes here in the UK will face the full force of the law, including deportation at the earliest opportunity for those eligible.